What's up guys, Mike here from Meekum Knives and I'm back with another episode of How to Make a Frame Lock. Last we left off, we did a little bit of chamfering. We got inside here and made that finger choil really nice and soft and, and a pleasure to use. And we released the lock bar. This episode is going to be all about detents. Now, for those of you that don't know, the detent is what keeps the blade in the knife while it's closed. You see what I mean? It also gives you that desirable action that it flies out like a rocket action or even um, it gives you just something to load your finger against and have that knife flick out without having to wrist flick it or do anything like that. Desirable action in today's knives. Now the way I do the detent and you may need to adjust the way you do yours, the way I do mine is going to be specific to how I build the knife. So if you've been following along with the whole series, you'll be good to go. You're not going to have to deviate too much if you have a different design or if your spacing is just a little bit, but you might need to play with it. Okay, you might need to adjust it and kind of see what works for you. Some people like these crazy hard detents where you break your fingers and some people like a softer detent where you give it a little wrist flick. I like it right in the middle. Snappy action, and drop free uh, closing. Okay, so that's how I'll show you how to do it. We're also gonna cover in this episode how to make a pocket clip. And I quickly, if that'll show up on camera, I quickly went and I designed a pocket clip for this knife. As you can see here, if it'll focus, it's trying to focus on me. <laughs> so anyway, I designed a pocket clip and uh, it's just kind of a, a roundabout of where we want to end up. It doesn't necessarily have to look like that. Uh, and a pocket clip can really look like anything you want it to. I, I got a buddy that makes little lightning bolts for pocket clips. <laughs> Felix, if you're watching this, what's up, man? Okay, enough yakking. Let's start installing some detents. Quick note about detent placement. You see, I have my design is calling for it right about in the middle of the lock bar. And the reason for that is, you see a lot of them put them up here in the corner, or some even down low. If I put it up here in the corner, when the knife moves, I run the risk of falling into this track. You don't want the detent to fall off the blade ever when it's moving. So if I put it in the middle, it'll come around like this, around the track. You can also do it down low, but then you're going to run into issues with chamfering. So I run it right here in the middle to go around the track. On this particular one, I'm going to go 60 thou away from the lock face. That should give me enough room where I'm not going to run into issues drilling the hole for the detent. And this is for a 1 16th detent ball. So I'll just take this, doing this through the camera so it's a little weird. There we go. And scribe a line. Okay. Now on this particular design, I want it right in the middle. So whatever half of this distance is, is where I'm going to measure it. And I happen to measure it before uh, going on camera. So I know it's 165 thou. So there's our 165. And I'll go from the top here where I have a flat surface to reference. And scribe another line. Now, that'll focus. You see you have a nice detent, uh, a nice crosshair, if you will, to place our detent. So now I'll take my optical center punch. And some of you guys have asked where to get this. I get this from grizzly.com and they go for about 30 or 40 bucks. And <laughs> check this thing out. I got this tiny little hammer just so I could use the optical center punch on camera and not hit anything. What a cute little hammer. <laughs> okay, there's a couple of things you're going to need to drill the detent. And that is a number 53 carbide drill and a number 54 carbide drill. And this is what they look like. That's the number 53 right there. Be careful when you open them. They're super fragile and very easy to break because they're so hard. And that's the nature of carbide. But they will drill into hardened steel, which is what we have right here with our blade. Now because they're carbide drills, you need to run them really, really fast. So here's what you gotta do. That's your steel drilling, your typical speed. That's no good for carbide. So what you gotta do, 
open this guy up. And you see all these pulleys in here? Go to the opposite end. There we go. That's the fastest setting, and most of them have a diagram like that where you could check for yourself. So now I just have to put the tension back in. Okay, and you'll hear the difference. This part is very important. If you look closely at the blade, now it's all assembled and everything. The stop pin is in place. There's no screw, but the stop pin is in there. If you look closely, if I squeeze really hard, I can get the blade to move. It's just everything flexing, and that's... You could go check any one of your folding knives. They all do this, or most of them will. It's not a lot. There, you can see it there. But that is important in the build process. So now, get yourself a 1-2-3 block like this. And a clamp. The 1 2 3 block is to prevent it from going any further than the actual knife itself. And we're just going to tighten that clamp down and force that blade deeper than it normally would sit. Now, when you do this, be careful. Do not go crazy and gorilla tighten this clamp. You just want to move that blade in a little bit. Let me see if I can show you it from this angle. And everything is fully assembled. So let's see. Tightening the clamp. There, did you see it? The blade just went down a little bit. Loosened it. Tightened it. That's it. Just that little bit. That's all you need. Okay? So now, see I'm rocking because I didn't do it on the 1, 2, 3 block. You don't want that. So loosen up. Press down on the knife. And let's tighten that up again. Okay, much better. Now we can drill the detent. You want to also remember that number 53 sounds like it would be the smaller of the two. It's the opposite. Number 54 is the smaller of the two. Number 53 is the larger one. So we want to start with the number 54 drill. The object of this here is to... You want to hold your lock bar down too, by the way. I know it's hard to see from your angle, but I'm going to press that lock bar down because there's that 20 thou of room just so the drill doesn't press it and put stress on that bit because it will snap like a toothpick. The idea is to go through the lock bar and put a divot in the blade. That's it. Don't drill all the way through your blade and into the other handle. Through the lock bar, divot in the blade. There you go. That squeal means we just hit steel. <laughs> My little button fell out. There we go. That's our number 54 hole. Okay, now we need to swap out to a number 53 drill. All right, here's our number 53. What you want to do is you just want to go and tap the hole. Don't drill it all the way down. Don't drill it any further. Just go in there and give it a little, almost like a, a chamfer inside the hole with that bigger bit. Go back here and hold it this way so you can see it. The number 53. That's it. That'll give it that sharper action, that uh, the nice stiffer detent. You also want to go through and drill this with a number 53 as well to hold the detent ball. Okay, that's it. Now we're ready to install the ball after we take care of this little burr here. Now, word of advice, do not, I repeat, do not chamfer that hole. Uh, don't use a, a bigger drill or one of those chamfering bits. You want to just f sand that flat. So for me, I'm going to take it on the disc, sa disc sander for a about two seconds just touch that little burr off or get some sandpaper and just flatten that with a stick or a, a sanding block rather. So what you see in front of you is the smaller Harbor Freight 
arbor press. Uh, you can do this with a hammer, it really doesn't matter. I just have the press in the shop, so I just do it this way. Uh, you can, uh, word of caution, if you're going to use the hammer method, you can crack the ceramic detent balls. I haven't done it yet. I've used the hammer quite a few times to get these in, uh, and with, with nothing but luck. So, just a word of caution. So, we're going to use the arbor press because we have it. These are the detent balls. So, you can see they're tiny, and they're one sixteenth of an inch. Okay. Over here we have our lock side, and this is just a piece of G10. You don't need the G10, it's just there. You will need something hard though, and I have this old blade, one of my failed attempts. Just something hard to press that detent in, because that ceramic detent is very, very tough. And this is, a, I guess it's mild steel, or it's just going to end up denting the press and not uh, sinking the detent ball in like we want. Now, the secret to get consistent depth, and the way I do it, is simply this. This little 25 thou. Uh, these are just feeler gauges. You get these at your local auto parts store for a couple of bucks. They, they come in a set of like a, every single size. You know, they're all different thicknesses. And just check them. If you buy a cheap set, it might not be the 25 thou it says it is. But this is close enough, so... I take this, and that little hole is what we need. So now I'm going to take that little hole, and I'm just going to put it over the detent, just like that. And now, I somehow drop the ceramic ball, get one of these little balls, drop the ceramic ball in there without losing it. There we go, as you can see, I got the ball just right over the hole. The hole's holding it in place for now. It's not pressed in yet, and the feeler gauge is just resting there. Okay. So now I'll, I'll do an initial press without the hardened blade or the hardened steel. You could use a one, two, three block because those are hardened as well. Just to set it in place and then I'll sink it to the correct depth using the hardened blade. Don't do that because I just lost the ball. Found it. And I just press that in pretty hard, but it's just going to end up denting the bottom of this, so now I'll throw the hardened blade over it. Just so that ball has nowhere to go but where I want it to. Now one way to tell... Looks like the ball is 25 thou where we want it to. It's not protruding past the feeler gauge here. And you can also take the corner of your feeler gauge and just kind of peck at it and see if it'll come out. If it doesn't come out, most likely you're good to go. All right, D10 balls in. I know you guys want to do this, and I'm guilty of this too. You have the detent installed, this is your first uh, folding knife build, and you want to test it out and see how you did. We didn't bend the lock bar yet and fight the urge to bend it just yet. We need to do a few more things before we bend it. But what you can do is press with your thumb on the lock bar to test it out and see if your blade falls out. Alright, blade's not falling out. And you can go ahead while keeping pressure on your thumb, simulating a bent lock bar. You get to test your action. Alright, we're going to leave it at that for now. Let's start working on a pocket clip. Oh, hey, remember that handle we screwed up? This is why we don't throw away any scrap here. Now we got a pocket clip. Here's another tip, guys. So you don't get your hands and stuff covered in glue, and you don't cover the entire piece of scrap in glue. Get a piece of paper, take your little pocket clip, put it down like that. And of course, I'm using the 3M Super 77. That's it.
we're going to need to drill these holes with a 564 drill these guys here and the reason for that is it's going to have to eventually end up as a number 44 so we can pass the screws through but we still have to tap the frame and align the clip to the frame so 564 is the one that we use to tap titanium so 564 through here line it up on the frame drill the frame then drill this out to a number 44 it'll make sense in a minute whoa don't forget to switch your drill press back drill slipped a little bit now my pocket clip looks cross-eyed that's okay <laughs> we didn't line it up to the frame yet we just can't screw up the frame Let's clean that up a little bit, shall we? If you find that you're pushing away your template as you're grinding, get yourself something to push it with that's not your fingers, like that. There we go, about 400 grit. Not bad, you can take your template off now. I've got the template off and I cleaned it up on the disc grinder a little bit. Uh, you can just flatten it out, however you want to do it. Now, we have our little template here and our scale. So now, let's get an idea of where we want it. As you can see the design, I kind of follow the flow of the back of this knife. Of course, you could always adjust it to make sure. And I like it when it lines up right over the middle of the lock bar and the reason for that is it can act as an over travel as you can see it's if these are stiff enough it'll it'll help with over travel without having to put the over travel stop or any of that stuff it's it's not a excellent solution but it helps okay so now what you want to do is align it where you want it on the knife on the handle rather and you want to clamp it in place. That's where these can't twist clamps come in handy is because it's not going to twist it out of position. That's why they call them the can't twist. It just kind of closes down on them. So I got two so it doesn't pivot on the center one so it's not going to go anywhere and now I have a template to drill my 564 holes so I could drill those out for the frame and tap it. Going down Don't forget the chamfer. There we go. That's looking good. 256 thread form tap in the tapmatic. Don't forget, we have to open up those holes in the pocket clip with a number 44 drill. That's what I have in here now. That'll let the screws pass through and tap into the frame. Of course you're going to need longer screws for this because it has to has to pass through and into the frame. These are a little too long, but we could trim them, that's no big deal. And of course these are gonna get recessed. Alright, right where we wanted it. Eh, the screws aren't too long. 
They're a little long, but not too bad. And I'm pushing really hard. The pocket clip over travel is definitely helping. It's lifting up that whole clip back there. All right, making progress. Do yourself a favor and do that. You don't want to make this mistake and mill it from the wrong side. Okay, let's go to the drill press and we're gonna recess these holes just like we did on the frame right here with the masonry bit. We're gonna start it off with that one there. As you can see that. And then we're gonna finish it off with this guy, the, uh, the 161 end mill. There we go, recessed. They can go in a little bit further, but we're gonna call that good enough for now. All right guys, that looks like it's gonna do it for this episode. Now we successfully installed our pocket clip. We didn't mill it yet, but we're gonna get that in the next episode. Uh, it's a little detailed and you have to get the measurements just right to get that nice spring action. So we'll, uh, we'll do that in the next one. We'll cover that first. And then after that, we'll cover uh, how I chamfer or contour the handles. It's either or, whatever you guys prefer. I'll probably end up doing the contouring like I do on my albatross knives. I have some, uh, some tricks that work out pretty well for that. Uh, and we also installed the detent. Now if your detent's a little light, like this one might be, I don't know, it's hard to tell because we haven't been the lock bar. There are a few little tricks that you can use to tune it and get a little better action out of it. Uh, if your detent's super crazy heavy right now and it's a finger breaker, uh, that one's going to be a little tougher to rectify. But we'll do our best and we'll dive into it and see what we can come up with. Well, it looks like that'll do it for this episode. I'll catch you guys on the next video.